Self-care in five steps. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Self-Love Monday. How are you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author, podcaster, and your uplifting life partner. Now, if you followed any of the uh, things that I do, you've heard me talk about these same five steps in the past, but I use them in terms of how you take action. They're the steps that we already do. It's just recognizing them and using them to your advantage on why you do or don't take action in your life. But what I wanted to do is take the same five and show you how they actually work in dealing with self-care, self-love. The first thing I talk about, well, let, I'll tell you the five of them. You have words. Those words go into uh, thoughts. Then we turn those thoughts into stories, and then we take those stories, and emotions will follow that, and then from that, our actions take place. So the words, the words are basically the language in which you speak. Just that, they're words. I've used the illustration like bad, depending on the environment you come from. Bad can mean many things. It can mean bad is bad. Bad can mean awesome. Those are words. The easiest way for me to, to go into the steps to get clear is I use the example of it's like on the Internet. Words are what you would type into the browser. Like if you put love or you put self-care or you put whatever. What that's going to do is it's going to bring up a page of all these different topics dealing with the word or words that you typed into the browser. That's the second step that I call thoughts. On that page, there's many different thoughts. Depending on which one you click, you'll get to hear a particular conversation on that particular, by that particular person or company or whoever uh, is defining whatever it is that you put into the browser. And that gives you a lot of thoughts that now you get to come up with the more of those you click, the more thoughts that you have. Does that make sense? From those different thoughts, you will create what I call step number three, which are stories. You will take the different thoughts, come up with your own perspective, your own beliefs, add your own values, and then you will come up with your own story from those thoughts. And what's going to happen after you write your story, step four is going to kick in, which is feelings. You're going to feel a certain way based on the story that you write. So if you guys understand what I just said, you understand you control your feelings. Why? The story that you wrote created the feeling. But see, what we don't recognize is we think, well, no, because my, my, my feelings just, they just pop. No, you're conditioned. You have habits that now have become so spontaneous when things happen, you just automatically respond a certain way. That's why certain people, angry people just get angry. Sad people just get sad. Happy people get happy. It's because they've already conditioned themselves to now they don't have to really sit back on the words and read all the different thoughts or hear all the different thoughts and come up with the story to create the feelings because now they have habits. But that is the process that we go through. And then based on how we feel will take us to step five, which is the actions that we will take. So I always tell people throughout that process, you look and say, where am I at? And what is it that I'm trying to, trying to change? So if I say I'm sad, that's a feeling. And if I'm asking the question, I know what the what that sadness is going to cause me to do because I can look at my actions and know what sadness does for me. But if I say, but I want to find out where did that actually come from? Why am I sad? Then if the emotions is number four, what's number three that came before that? Stories. So we go back and visit the story we change the story, which is step three, and it will change the feelings and emotions. Does that make sense? So anyway, so the way I wanted to, the, the reason I wanted to bring that into play is because that's how we work on the self-care. There's different words. You guys have heard me talk about just recently how 
people are telling you whether you're average and ordinary, um, telling you, they're comparing you to other people on whether you're successful, whether you're an alpha dog, a, a beta dog, or whatever whatever labels people want to do, which, which unfortunately we're in a society that loves tagging people. And majority of the labels are all designed for one reason. The people that use them have very low self-esteem. And so they use the labels to bad mouth or to pull down other people so that they can feel better about themselves. Now, that's the negative labels that I'm talking about. Um, because it's not, if what you're saying is not designed to pull people up, then what is it designed to do? Pull them down. Does that make sense? So if what you're saying is designed to pull people down, then obviously there's something that you need to address within yourself to think that it's that you're significant, your significance is being received by the tearing down of someone else, which is, you know, you guys have heard me say there's two ways to build the tallest building. One is you build the tallest building. The other one is tear down buildings around you. Unfortunately, most people live in that second one and they're always tearing down so that they could feel better about themselves. And again, everything that I share is to teach you how to build the tallest building, which is yourself. And that's the idea behind this is so that you can recognize that if people are using certain words or if you're using them against yourself, those words are tied to, again, thoughts. Those thoughts have turned into stories. Whenever someone says something about you, you got to recognize the story that has been written and realize just what I've been talking about. Is that story inspiring you to move in the direction you want to go? Or if those stories are designed to destroy you? I'm not, again, a person that teaches people that you got to get to a point where you don't care what other people think. I tell people that in order to get to that point in your life, one, you'd have to be pretty arrogant to get to a point where you really, truly don't care about other people. I mean, what other people think. And you would have to, and the th second thing, you'd have to stop being a human being. As human beings, we all care. Whenever I hear people say that they don't care, I say, so what your mom thinks about you means nothing. Well, no, I'm not talking about my mom. Wait, 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 you can't have exceptions. Either you care what people think or you don't. See, I, my thing is, I tell people, you don't get to the point where you don't care what other people think. You get to the point where you weigh what people think and determine on if what they're saying is designed to help me or hurt me. If it's designed to help me, I take it and I use it because it may not even be presented in a way that I prefer to hear it or from the person I'd want to hear it from. But the information is valuable and will help me move in the direction that I want to go. Therefore, I need to be able to take that information because if I get to the point where I don't care what other people think, well, if we come across a person that I don't really see eye to eye to, I'm not listening to anything that they say. But guess what? They could be giving me some valuable information that I'm missing out on because I've tuned them out because I don't care what you think. And I don't care. Folks, don't get to that point. Be able to weigh what people say. Fill out what, what is the information designed to do. And if it is designed to destroy you, now, that's the stuff you can shut off. You can let roll down your bag. You can ignore this and that. But you got to be willing to, to evaluate the information first. Remember, we got the story. We Let's evaluate that first because we're going to feel a certain way when we get through and then our actions will follow. So, again, we got. So, what I was getting to and the whole idea behind this conversation is when someone says something to you or you say that to yourself, Go through those five steps, especially when it comes to your to, to how you feel about yourself. Um, I was talking to uh, a young man that I mentor, and that's kind of what we we're going through because for him, he's feeling bad about himself because of a relationship in which he's uh, going through right now. He's in a, kind of like a breakup, and he's he's tearing himself down, and he's pointing everything at himself. Remember. The stories that you're writing are going to make you feel a certain way. And then your actions will follow that. And so if you're telling yourself all these negative stories about yourself, it's not hard to figure out why you'll start to be depressed. This is why I'm saying this is why we're talking about this on Self Love Monday, because I'm saying 
you always have to be your biggest cheerleader. Others are not always going to be there to cheer you on. And if you see and recognize that your emotions are in a certain place and you're uh, not taking the actions that you know would be in your best interest, you have to know how to be able to say, how do I get myself out of this? How do I pull myself out of this funk so that I can start to move in the direction I say I want? That's why you have to understand this five steps because you got to be able to say, okay, time out. Let me walk myself through this process and take back control. So what I was sharing with him also, if you get the negative emotions, that's being human. Let it flow. I'm a person that, hey, even men, if you need to cry, cry. I'm not buying in all the other stuff that people want to talk about. Your emotions are your emotions. They're yours. They're real. They're, they're coming out of you for a reason. It, this is not about you hiding from the world to make them feel better. That's their issues that they have to deal with. You have to be able to let that stuff out because the reality is we know if you're going to have to eventually, especially if what you're thinking right now and the actions that you're taking are taking you down from an emotional perspective or making you feel down about yourself, whatever, you already know that eventually I'm going to have to change the story. I'm going to have to feel a different way so that I can lift myself up so that I can start getting better results. So if you already know that, how long are you going to wait to make that shift? Again, that's why I'm not a person that's going to sit here and say, well, I get it. You know, people have their own time periods and they got, no, we got to quit telling people that that's not real. You can't let a person sit there and soak. Now, again, what I just said, you do have to be human. If you need to cry, you need to scream, you need to roll around on the floor, you need to punch a pillow, you need to do, you know, scream at the top of your lungs, whatever you got to do to get that out, you do that. That's being a human being. Don't let anyone tell you you shouldn't respond that way. Again, that's why I believe a lot of men uh, are, are dying at, uh, at younger ages is because they're so stressed out because they can't respond the way they want to be as a real human being because the world has told them how they're supposed to respond. And then they naturally, they don't respond that way. So now they got that conflict and it's killing them literally inside. Remember I've said before, the stuff mentally will eventually destroy you physically. That's why for me, let that mental, whatever you got to get out, the emotional stuff, let that stuff go. Get it done. You guys have heard me tell the story when, when this COVID first broke out for about two days because I was doing a lot of research and a lot of studying, a lot of conspiracy theories and a lot of stuff. And I'm not here to tell you guys what to believe or not, but I do think there's a lot more going on. But I'm not going to get into that because that's not what this is all about. But the bottom line is when I got through for two days... I was totally drained, depressed. Uh, I didn't even know, I have never been at a depressed state. So I, I've heard people talk about that. And I, I never experienced it first. I mean, of course, what happened with my wife, those who don't know my story, know I lost my wife uh, six years ago to cancer. So I'm not talking about for me personally, I, because that was, I did go through some emotional stuff for her because I lost you know, the person that's been with me for 32 years, as, as I've told people before, that was, you know, when people talk about your ride or die partner, that was her. And so I'm just talking about going to a depressed state over something like this COVID-19. And um, I was really down for two days, just totally just out of it. But I recognize, Ron, you can't change what is taking place, which, which is the stuff, again, I'm trying to share and teach. The things you can change, change. The things you can't, you got to move forward. You got to write the stories to say, I got to move on. I got to figure out a way to, because if you can't change it, you can't change it. But sitting around and, 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 and going through changes over it, it's not good for you. So I was down for a couple of days, but I went through the steps that we're talking about. 
I recognized and I took some time out and I said, oh, look at all the thoughts that are going through your head. All those thoughts, you're creating these stories that are just, whoo, you can't help but get depressed, frustrated, sad, uh, you know, uh, think the world's coming to you. Can't, you can't write the stories that you're writing and not feel that way. Those are horror stories. <laughs> you guys get me? They're going to create horror. And so I had to go and rewrite those stories. Not saying I changed what I think is going on. I'm not saying that. You can still believe the end is going to be the same, but the perception and the story that you write, you have to be, it's kind of um, the example I use when I tell people, you have to be at peace wherever you are in your life. You could have, you could be, at a point where financially you don't have a lot. You can still be happy. That doesn't mean that you're not going to go out and, and work to strive to improve your financial picture. But you can still be happy. I always go back to um, the Tony Robbins when he talked about because uh, he owns an island in Fiji. Must be nice there. huh? <laughs> but he owns an island and he said it was amazing to him to see that here are people that lack from an economic perspective that according to the world should be sad. And those are some of the happiest people he's ever, he's ever met. Yet he interviewed over 50 billionaires to write his last book and majority of them are unhappy. See, that's why, that's the reason I keep telling people, those of you who still haven't, it's not clicking, quit letting the world keep convincing you that this is the money and the FICO scores and all the external stuff is still the answer. It's not, I'm not saying those things aren't good to have, to enhance your journey. But if you believe you need that stuff to make you happy, you will never ever truly be at peace and truly happy. You have to be able to be at peace with or without that stuff. And all those things is add to it, it gives you more options. And again, my thing is you can have it all. Don't get it wrong. Don't, don't, don't have anybody misinterpreting what I'm saying. You know, I'm not one of those to tell you money is evil. I, I ain't saying that. Never will say that. I'm just saying, keep the priorities, the priorities. Just like I tell people it's character and integrity first. Then we can add the economics. We can work together to work on the economic stuff together because it's all external. So, but anyways, back to the whole purpose of this video is just that remembering those five steps. And if you're ever doing anything, saying anything that is harmful to yourself, or you're allowing other people to say things that is destroying you from an emotional perspective and mental perspective, you got to take these five steps and, and, and work through them. Take the thoughts that they throw on at you. Look at the story that you've written to this point. Rewrite that story so that you can change the way that you feel. And then your actions will ultimately change. Only stay with the actions if they're moving you in the direction that you say you want to go. If not, let's go backwards again. Understand I'm take, not taking good actions. That means I need to go to number four, which is recognizing it's because I'm feeling a certain way. That's why I'm responding the way I'm responding. You know, like I said, if you see a person, we know how a depressed person looks. You know what I'm saying? You, can, you tell people, describe them. They know their head's down. They're breathing shallow. Why? Because it takes work to be depressed. You can't walk around smiling and, 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 and thinking great thoughts and be depressed. It's impossible. The human body does not work that way. It says make a choice. Either we're happy or we're sad. What I want you to understand is you control that. So when you have that negative stuff coming at you, the things where you're not caring about yourself. Again, that's why we're saying the exercise of looking in the mirror. That's really the purpose of that. You're rewriting the story. You guys follow me? You're rewriting the story that the world has maybe told you. Just like I was saying, listen to that uh, the, the relationship guy that was talk, telling the person they're average at ordinary. I mean, average at best. Compared to who? Get out of the comparing business. And, not, and do not allow other people to compare you and then you take what they said to be gospel. That's their perspective. 
I remember this uh, this one young lady uh, I had saw, she did an experiment. And what she did is she went on the same night, same time, she wore different color wigs just to see how she would, you know, how people would treat her. You guys know when she wore the blonde wig, it was nonstop people trying to, guys trying to get at her. Why? Because society painted a picture. Now, now this is the, this is kind of, uh, it's changed a lot. I mean, because you have now ladies that are that are um, a little bigger than they used to. Because the models we know in the past were real tiny, real, really, real thin. And now we see they're getting, you know, where now you're seeing the average size woman, the real, real women um, that are starting to see, you know, to uh, do commercials, uh, do all the different, you know, bras and everything else. And so it's starting to change what people perceived beauty to be but it used to be blonde hair blue eyes was beauty so if you weren't blonde hair blue eyes you already know the chances of you being 10 a uh, 10 according to society you were out of the picture how could you be a 10 you're not blonde hair blue eye think about that how silly that sounds because that's what people were being programmed that this is what beauty is that's why i don't get into all that there are cultures that again, I've shared this before, that thin women, they try to put some meat on them and give them food because they're saying it's not healthy for you to be thin. So in this particular culture, if you're a thin woman, they're not going to, I used the analogy because uh, one guy was trying to joke with me one time. He was talking about, yeah, she didn't look like uh, Halle Berry. She looked more like Precious. Those of you who never saw the movie Precious, Precious was a bigger, uh, bigger lady. And um, so he was basically trying to take shots at Precious. And I told him, I said, well, it depends on the culture. And some cultures, they'll take Precious over Halle Berry. You guys follow me? So what you call a five and what someone else calls a five or what someone else calls a 10, if we're able to use our own thoughts and not use the thoughts that the world has programmed us to believe what beauty is and how a person should look. Well, first off, get rid of the, 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 the grading scale to begin with. I mean, it's either you're attracted to the person or you're not. Because I'm not good at that. I mean, when people go, you give them a six or seven. Well, I'm not good at that because I don't put people on a scale. It's either I'm attracted to her or not. I'll say she's closer to my type or she's not. I can say she's fine or she's not. But I don't sit there and go, huh, she's probably like an eight or nine. You know, now I've jokingly said, and I'll say that. I'm like, on a scale of one to ten, man, she a 15. Just basically telling you I think she's really fine. But... I don't, I don't, I don't know. How do you, how did, how do you get to that point? Do you say, well, if their, their, their eyes are a certain color equals a 10. If their hair is a certain style, they equal, wh how do you define is what are you, because you're doing a comparison or you wouldn't say they're five or six or whatever. You got to be comparing them to something. What are you using as the comparison and why are you using them to compare? We got to get out of the compare bit. But anyway, that wasn't the purpose of this video. This video is just basically for you to say, whenever I'm being attacked personally because I'm doing it myself, or others are attacking me, or and it, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a total negative, but in order to care for myself and to love myself, I have to come to a realization of these five steps and understand that I get to determine how I feel about me. Good, bad, right, wrong. I get to decide that. Don't ever give that power to someone else. So again, um, as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, for those of you that we talk on uh, Thursdays, uh, Relationship Thursday, I'll talk to you on Thursday. For those of you on uh, Self Love Monday, I'll talk to you back next week, uh, Monday. And run over to ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, ronsimplifiedmyers.online. That's where I got all my different programs going on and what I'm up to now. And uh, and as you guys know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. Bottom line is learn those five. And if you ever start getting to a point where you're thinking anything negative about yourself, or you just need to love yourself or care for yourself. Recognize where it comes from. Follow those five steps and get yourself back on the road.
to loving you some you. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.